All right, wine review time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine with West Wednesday. West Wine Wednesday. Wine with a lot of stuff. Is what would West do? West is gonna say it's Wine with West, and it just happens to be a Wednesday. Shout out to all the people checking us out from Drink a Day Club. Great website. Amazing things happening on Instagram, Facebook. Follow them on all their social media because Drink a Day Club. Well, not only am I just happy to be a part of the group, I gotta tell you. A lot of people have messaged me going, Wes, your last couple of videos, like, whoa, you went from a 2 to a like, 10 plus with your video editing. Truth be told, shout out Matthew Height. Matt, you're the man. You've been doing all the editing. One of the founders of Drink A Day Club has been doing the hard work for me. So, all right, I can't take, you know, everything. for. I, you, a lot of people said, is Hammy doing it? Because things have turned up. Nope, Hammy's not doing it. Shout out to Matt. Appreciate your hard work. Appreciate the collaboration and us working together here with Drink A Day Club. We're talking about one drink. We're telling stories. One story, you know, one day of the week. Today's Wednesday and off we go. So, what are we covering today? First things first, champagne. People are like, hey, Wes, you're doing red wine and white wine. You got the same grading skills? Yes. Now I'm going to bring champagne into it. Or how do you, what's Kevin? Kevin! Yes, you can do that because they're all made from grapes and it's fermented grapes. One's red, one's white, one happens to be sparkling. And we're going to get into the sparkling variety, the sparkling wine today. It's all wine. Wine with West Wednesday. It's technically a wine. True story. I say the word champagne, but then you got to talk about what that means. Champagne's a region. You have to go up to the northeast, about an hour and a half drive away from Paris if you ever want to go explore. That's the champagne region. Only sparkling wine that's made in that region can be called champagne. Italy. Sparkling wine is called Prosecco. In the U.S., we, we just kept it simple and said, sparkling wine? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. We all agree. Sparkling wine, sparkling wine. Champagne. I have to take it back to the roots with this one. We're coming in with some, uh, you know, with some history here, with some, some good stories to tell about. I'm talking about not just champagne, but we're talking about Bollinger. Bollinger Champagne. Roots go back to the 16th century. Uh, it's the oldest independently owned uh, champagne sparkling wine manufacturer there is. They started in 1829. Shout out 29. Those who know me know. You know, if you, if you push your tea set in, if you know, you know. 1829 when it started and uh, actually the roots go back to, like I said, the 16th century. And in fact, if you look at Vov Clicquot, if you look at Piper Heidsick, if you look at uh, Krug, all Germans, yeah. German, which is what you're looking at here, Bollinger. A lot of Germans back in the 16th century migrated over to what is now the Champagne region of France, and that's where you get a lot of these fine French champagnes from. So it's funny the roots don't actually come from the French or some of the best, but don't get me wrong. Shout out to all my French champagne makers, no offense, but some of the best aren't from France. In fact, they're Germans, like I said here with Bollinger. Um, you know, these guys are still independently owned. They all go all the way back to 1829, like I said, and they don't just do champagne. They're known for champagne. If you've heard of Bollinger, it's because of their champagne, most likely. But they do wines. They do a little bit of everything. And uh, if you've heard of Bollinger before, where did you hear it from? On the island of Jamaica, back in the early 50s, a guy named Ian Fleming. Oh, you know where I'm going now. Again, if you shout out Pusha T, if you know, you know. Why? Because if you go back to the 1850s, Ian Fleming rented a little house on the island of Jamaica, and he was looking for a title character as he was looking at books around the house he was renting. He saw a book on ornithology. It's a mouthful to say, but it's all about bird watching. And the author of that book's name was Bond, James Bond. Ian Fleming gave us James Bond. James Bond, arguably one of the coolest fictional characters ever. I mean, he's up there with me with some biblical characters, but James Bond's just the man. New movie should be coming out soon, hopefully. Wish I could watch it in a theater. It's okay. 85 curve inch, 85 inches of curved, 85 inch curved TV. It's over there. Anyway, even if I can just watch it there. James Bond's the man. Aston Martin, Omega Watch. I should have put an Omega on for this. And of course, what's his champagne of choice? The ladies' man himself, when he takes down the Bond girls, Bollinger Champagne. Boom. 
Now, James Bond, obviously, in English, he worked, he was 007, he worked in the, the, the division, the kind of like, uh, the MI6, there it is, boom, almost lost it. And what's really cool about Bollinger Champagne, shout out Queen Elizabeth II, because Her Majesty's seal of approval, where's it at? It's right there. Kaboom! She, well, this is the first champagne that's ever approved a seal of approval from Her Royal Majesty. Miss Queen Elizabeth II, first champagne she ever approved. Did you know, shout out Queen Elizabeth, I hope you're watching this, she has four drinks a day. And I don't, I mean, she's up there in age, but she's still partying like a rock star. One of those drinks that she has, a glass of Bollinger Champagne. Can't knock her hustle, can't knock the queen. So as we're thinking about the queen, James Bond, Germans, French, Champagne. There's so much going on right now. I know, over the, we're going, still going. There may be some like fallout from this because there's so much happening. And you're saying, what? So we're just talking about Champagne. Yes. Bring it, let's, let's, I'm trying to dial it back, but there's so much going on right now that I have to take a minute and just help you understand that Champagne, when you grab a bottle of it and it actually says Champagne, it's from the region. You're going to find quite a diverse group. You're going to find Brut, that's what I had, or Special Cuvée. You're going to find Rosé, all different grapes. What I'm working with here, let's focus, let's start to dial it back in to this specific bottle, this Bollinger, Special Cuvée, as you see right there. Uh, champagnes range at all sorts of prices. This one specifically, usually Bollinger, their Cuvée, eh, 60 bucks. You're doing fine. 60 bucks, it's Bollinger, that's how it works. Um, and a bit about it. Well, you know what? Let me open it up while we talk about it. I can't tell you a year right now. You know why? Because their year is like, uh, what was that? It's, it's like reading from, well, what the hell is the name of that book that he wrote that turned into a movie with Tom Hanks? Uh, 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 right, where Tom Hanks runs around looking for buried treasure, there's a code involved. And just like this, there's a code on the back of the foil. And it's interesting, the code on the back of the foil says L1723501. That's actually how you decode through uh, Bollinger's understanding of when they've made their champagnes and wines, for example. L1717, that's the year. 235, the day of the year. So if I'm going to do my math, 180 is the middle, that's June, so we're probably somewhere around August. And this was the first batch, zero one, the first batch of the day, because they can have four, five, six batches in a day. So the first batch from the 255th, 235th day of 2017 is when this bottle was brought to us. Notice, there's no year. The only year is 1829. Shout out 29 again. The only year that's on it, because that's when they started. And again, remember, they're still family owned, still independently owned. Not one of the conglomerates like the LVMHs, which is the Moet and Chandon family. We're not going to get into that. I'll get into that another time. I want to take this off and tell you what, you, what you're going to expect. We're looking at a champagne that when it's poured, you're going to notice it's golden. Golden in color because it comes from uh, those dark like black grapes, typically what you find. Now, that's not going to make it a rosé, a completely different type of grape for that. You're going to notice when I get into it that it's going to have a citrus and apple-y smell. Typically, I'm going to tell you to pair this with something like uh, a shellfish, sushi, sashimi, lobster, fish in general. If you want to go white meat, your chicken and your porks. But listen, I'll sit and have a handful of cashews and drink a bottle of this. It's good. It's Bollinger. One of my top champagnes. That's why I'm premiering it. Wine with West Wednesdays. One of my first champagnes. Not one of my, my first champagne I'm going to be doing. Had to start with old school OG James Bond mode. So Bollinger, right. So how do you open a bottle of champagne? Get asked this question a lot. Tried and true way for me to each his own. I'm not going to savor it. Not that cool. Uh, I'm, I'm not anyway. I unscrewed the top. I'm going to carefully take off this top. If you're really inventive, you can actually make this into a little turtle looking thing with a shell on top, but whatever. I got to flip something, so let's just throw that away. Now, compressed, gas inside. This is ready to explode. How do you open it? Hand, left. Right-handed. I'm going to twist slowly. I feel the pressure building. I'm starting to fight it back a little bit, and when it pops, I'm holding it tight in my hand. Beautiful sound, by the way. 
Nothing spilled over. Fantastic. The compressed gas released that. Look how wide that cork is. She's not going in there. She's not fitting. No matter how easy and hard. You, I don't. Kid show? Let's not go there. It's not fitting. That's what I'm trying to say. So, Bollinger from 2017, the 235th day of batch number one. Let's get it. Don't have a champagne flute right now. I have my Visca crystal glass. Staying true. Hammy said don't do it. Don't go for the flute. You got to stick with your Visca glass. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. Don't have to worry about it breathing. Bollinger. Cuvée Especial. Oh, my finger's all over it. But hey, listen. It's good enough for the queen. It's good enough for me. It's good. Give her a little swirl. Doesn't need it, though. One sip, everybody knows. <laughs> Apples, citrus, tiny, tiny, tiny little bubbles, like little velvet, something running around your mouth. I got to tell you that. I already told you. This would be good with anything, but if you're looking to pair it with something, fantastic idea. Sushi. Seafood. Off you go. One sip. Everybody knows the rules, right? Now, it's to me technically a wine. Red wine, white wine, rosés, doesn't matter. Champagne, sparkling wine, anything under the umbrella fits. I'm going 8.6. 8.6 on the Bollinger Champagne. Absolutely fantastic. This is going to go great with some friends and some dinner that's about to happen. Oh, James Bond style. Hammy, you ready to go? Listen, remember, check out and follow drinkaday.club. Great website, not just about wine. Wine with West Wednesdays. They're doing a lot of other things on other days. You'll find them on Instagram. You'll find them on Facebook. Check out what they got. Great content. Again, I'm really proud and happy to be a partner with these guys, uh, working together with the team there. And, um, you know, I know some people are going to be asking me, you look fly, you look fresh in that hoodie. This is, one of, this is a limited edition, one of two that have been made from a good friend of mine, Miguel Martinez. This is his logo from Miguel Global. His logo, as you see it right here, does a lot of things from podcasts to in the studio work and hard with music. Guy published a cookbook, and I think he did it in like 60 days, start to finish. He's an everyday hustler. He hustles. That's what Jersey boys do. Anyway, check out Miguel Global, Miguel Martinez, M Spired, his music, his podcast, good things to come there. Miguel, had to rock it. You hooked me up, had to rock it out. Uh, right. Bollinger Champagne, Wine with West Wednesday, Hammy and Wes, we are out of here. Have a good week, everybody.